Hey everyone, Dr. Morales again. Um, I just want to continue my educational series um, for plastic surgery. What I'll be talking about today is uh, breast augmentation and exercises that I discourage my patients to do um, really forever. Um, the way I do a breast augmentation is called a dual plane technique where the implant is partially under the muscle, it's partially under the breast tissue. I feel like it's the longest lasting um, implant pocket for patients. I think it decreases complications in the future. Um, uh, capsule contracture, risk of infection, uh, mouth position. So the three exercises I'm gonna talk about, I'm actually demonstrate with uh, my wife here, are uh, bench press, uh, chest flies, and dips. Those are the big three culprits I find cause complications specifically with mouth position of a breast implant laterally where the implant goes out to the side. We don't want that. We want the implant in the front of the chest, directly behind the areola. That's where we want the implant, that's where I put it, that's where I want to keep it. Um, patients who insist on doing chest to train the chest and make it bigger for some reason, um, I assure you that they will have complications of mouth position in the future. It might be years, it might be a decade, I don't know. But uh, anatomically, it's inevitable. Um, so I give this kind of talk, it's called the talk at two months when I release all my patients back to uh, life. They get to do any exercise they want um, with this specific limitation of these three exercises. So um, patients who've had surgery with me kind of know that I draw a lot, um, especially at the initial consultation. So I want to demonstrate you, to you real quick what that um, illustration is, specifically to talk about the anatomy and how the technique is done. And if you can understand that, then you understand why I feel like mouth position can be, is a problem um, for, for this type of technique, okay? So I'm gonna do it up here, that way it's a little bit more contrast. But the breast tissue is gonna look something like that, all right? Here's a chest muscle, I mean the sternum, all right? The aerial should be directly over the center mount of the breast, okay? We want the implant to live directly centered behind the areola. That's the ideal position. So the cloud falls up here. We have these big chest muscles called the pectoralis major muscle. It starts up on your shoulder and it fans down all the way down to your sternum and attaches to your ribs. Okay? So with that said, this part here is released from the chest wall ribs and it's lifted up to accept a subpictorial under the muscle implant. So you can see this interface, usually about you know 40%, 50% of the implant is covered on the top half of the implant by a chest muscle. So you can imagine if you continue training your chest and you're firing this chest muscle by doing bench press, you're doing flies, what's gonna happen, you're gonna put pressure on top, you're constantly gonna put pressure on the implant, and the implant's gonna go out to the side. So we don't want the implant to the side, all right? We wanna stay in the middle, close the sternum where I put it, okay? On the side profile view, This is an implant, how it's gonna look under gravity. It's kind of more teardrop shaped. And the muscle, this muscle here, is on top of the muscle, on top of the implant. Okay? Usually the access incision is through the crease, and then that way the implant's placed under under directly behind the breast tissue, which is on top of the implant. And the breast tissue goes to the areola and the ducts, okay? The top half of the implant is covered by the muscle. Okay, so again, anatomically, this constant pressure, if you start training your chest and continue to train your chest, um, especially specifically with these three exercises, you will put pressure on the implant. It's just, and there's nothing to stop it. There's no muscle that stops it other than latissimus dorsi muscle, which is this muscle back here. And again, that's, we have an implant in your armpit. So, um, Especially in the body, I see this often in the bodybuilding community where implants have, women have implants for a decade and um, they look amazing. They have no breast fat, they have no skin fat, they have no fat. 
it's really just uh, implant, skin, maybe a little bit of muscle, um, but they continue to train their chest. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen malposition in those, in those athletes, and they will need a reconstructive surgery to get that implant back to the center and then close off what's called the lateral pocket to correct the position, it's a malposition issue. So that's a reconstructive surgery, that's a very big deal. Um, and that's what I'm trying to prevent um, for all my patients with breast augmentation is to decrease the risk of malposition um, of an implant um, with training of uh, certain exercises. So what I'm gonna do now is demonstrate these exercises with my wife. Um, she knows very well not to do these exercises, but I'm gonna just show you real quick uh, what not to do. Um, and if you see any women doing these exercises with an implant and you know they have an augmentation, you know, tell them, go watch Dr. Morales' video and then maybe hopefully I convince them. But here we go, I'm gonna show you these real quick. I'm gonna demonstrate these exercises real quick. So I'm gonna use my wife. Uh, we did breast augmentation about three, four years ago. Um, she's in the bell and bone too, so ever since her augmentation, I told her not to do chest anymore. There's no reason for it. Um, she can train her chest all she wants, can do her back all she wants, and tries this all she wants. It's all about proportions. So um, this is a, the most common exercise, the bench press. And so just a standard you know, movement down and pressing up. This is a motion I do not encourage, um, especially with weight training. Uh, my CrossFit athletes who do burpees, I'm okay with burpees. Um, burpees are very um, intermittent, it's high intensity, it's not a whole lot of uh, weight because it's really your body weight. But you shouldn't train actively with bench press, you shouldn't do like hundreds and hundreds of, of uh, bench presses or push-ups. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise I really don't like is a, is a fly. So pectoral fly, you see a lot of guys do this. Obviously we, we want big chest, nice full round chest. But for women, you do not need to do it. It is 100% the pectoral major firing. And so with constant stretch and pressure, you're putting a lot of pressure on this implant, pushing out the side. Um, do you feel that? Yes. Yes, so we don't want to do that. And the third exercise um, is called is the dips. So dips is something that um, has a pectoralis major as a secondary accessory muscle. Um, the prime muscle is the shoulders and triceps. And so uh, most women do this on, you know, with their own body weight on the edge of a bench. Um, some women do it like upon a, on a machine. But again, this is a very, very, very harsh stretch on the pectoralis major. Again, the muscle lives right here. And when she dips down, she's gonna put pressure. You can see the implant kind of get pushed out. And that's what we don't want. You know, doing that hundreds and hundreds of times over the course of years, maybe a decade, and I promise eventually that implant will go out to the side and have a malposition issue. And that will, again, require a reconstructive surgery to get that implant back in the correct position. So the whole purpose of it is to decrease complications. I want the breast augmentation to last you as long as possible um, to be with your body. And I don't, I don't have any issues with um, corrective revision surgery we have to do in the future. So. Again, these are top three exercises on what you're doing um, after breast augmentation. Uh, please keep on my YouTube channel, my Facebook, Instagram. I'm going to keep, keep up with these educational series um, uh, videos. And thanks for following.